Hey everyone, Sean here. All right, so, uh, the trick. Of course, the light just went out. Anyway. It's daytime now, it's not nighttime, so uh, I can actually, I can actually see, but let me walk over here. Let's go ahead and turn the light switches back on, get a little more light in here. So the Trek, uh, I got all the bike packing stuff in now, and I said I was going to do a review on this stuff, so I got the bike pretty much packed up. My sleeping bag, I'm sorry, tent finally came in today. It's bigger than I expected. Um, I think, you know, I can't remember what the size was on Amazon. I'll have to look that up. But I was expecting it to be a little bit smaller to fit in the pannier. It's about three inches too tall to get the zipper closed on it. That's okay, though. I found a little spot for it right here, wedged between the seat post and the, uh, the rack. So there's just enough room where it doesn't touch. I don't know how that's going to work out after I take it out of the bag and set it up for the first time and then try to get it back in the bag. I'm sure you guys know how that goes. Uh, but it seems to be a pretty good spot right now. And then I was also able to clamp it, if you can see there, I was like, clamp it to the pannier because it's got these clips on the front. So that seemed to work out pretty good. And it's out of the way. And then I was kind of concerned about my legs hitting it while I pedal, but I took it around the block and... Um, it just my the back of my thigh just barely taps it and it's not enough to where it's going to bother me while I'm pedaling even if I'm going uphill or something and uh, really really putting some power into the pedals uh, so it's right it's a good spot right there I, I'm happy with that and then I was able to get everything else in the panniers so I've got my sleeping pad in here my new sleeping bag all the cooking stuff I still got to go to the store and I got to buy groceries and I got to get two cans of uh, of the gas it's not propane, it's the other camping gas. It's the kind of like little miniature um, wide cans. Anyway, so I got to get a couple of those, but I still have plenty of room. And of course, I got I to gotta make room for clothes also, but I'm going to pack real light. So this bag here, I've got this top pouch full, but this bag is completely empty, the one on top. So I've got room for uh, groceries and a couple changes of clothes in there, some extra socks and stuff. So I got plenty of room there. I still have room in this pannier. It's about half full, so I think I'm going to do all right. It's, there's going to be enough room. The front, the handlebar bag is about half full. I've got tools, and I got my, uh, I got my patch repair kits in there. I got two spare inner tubes. Um, the, unfortunately, the back is a 220, and the front's a 2.0 tube or tire, so I, I assume I can use either one on either tire if I really have to, but um for right now i've got one for each and i've got patch repair kits too and then i got my tools and everything up in here in this bag so um i still got i got to get my uh, multi-tool and put in here but as you see there's still plenty of room for me to put my snacks and stuff in here if i want and i might find a better place for these tubes but for right now they seem to fit pretty good in there so that's probably where i'll leave them um then got my little place for my for my coffee mug right here in the mornings and then my phone goes here. I'm going to put my battery pack here. And something I ordered that I haven't got yet is a solar panel. So it's a four panel uh, battery. It's like 37,500 milliamps. Um, and so what I'm going to do is just spread it out while I'm riding and it'll just kind of fit right over the back of the bag here. And then I can use it to charge that battery. And then at night I can charge my GoPro and charge my phone and everything. I'm just hoping that it gets enough light because uh, I think it only charges at 1.5 amps throughout the day. So uh, that's going to be, uh, I'll have to wait and see how it works kind of thing. But yeah, so uh, got everything set up and um, when the wind calms down, it's probably actually going to be next weekend. Today's Saturday, so it's probably going to be next weekend because I'm still waiting for the battery pack to come in 
and I'm still waiting for something else, which I can't remember what it is. But other than that, uh, pretty much ready to go. And I've gone through the bike, put my bicycle pump up here. I was trying to figure a place to put it because I'm out of uh, spots where you can like bolt up the water bottle cages. I'm using this one, I want to bring all the water I can. So I've got these two and there's no spot unless I use clamps and I really don't want to use clamps on the frame. So I decided to put it up here and uh, put four zip ties on it two facing each way if you see there's two on the back and then two on the front and then i got a crap load of extra zip ties too but it's got rubber pads on the feet here that hold it hold it down and uh it ain't going nowhere so even with the fork bouncing up and down you know uh it should stay there and like i said if it doesn't i got extra zip ties but it seems like that's a pretty good spot for it and then the issue I ran into up here was my light. So the, how the bar bends back, the light's going to be kind of crooked. It's going to be facing off this way at night. It's a really bright light, and it's rechargeable. So uh, I don't know how that'll work. But what I did was when I first got my Schwinn, I went and bought one of the, the cheap uh, ones over here. It came in like a kit, the uh, Z-Fall light. So it came with the front light and the back light and this water bottle cage and a lock. Got it at Walmart for like 20 bucks, but I found out that it clamps right around this post here pretty good, and you can actually adjust it up or down. So that's as far down as it goes, but it actually adjusts just right where it hits the road at night. So I've got this light facing forward, it'll hit the light, uh, it'll hit the road. And then I've got this one up here that's going to be kind of going that way, and uh, it's on a belt clip. So I can actually take it off and maybe clip it up here, is what I'm thinking I might do if it really gets to the point where it's bothering me but it's just you know as I'm riding this is going to be going like this so we'll see how it goes I think it'll be okay that little light down there is actually uh that's actually a pretty bright light but I still had it when I was using it at night I had a problem seeing in the distance with it so it's not real bright um I, I would even I wouldn't even say it puts out 100 lumens this puts out 800 lumens it says don't know what that little light does but i know i almost ran off the road one night on a bike trail because i couldn't see far enough ahead of me and i started going downhill pretty fast and almost didn't get stopped uh, just because I, I couldn't see out ahead of me that far this one here is not gonna be a problem because even like it's daytime right now and uh you can see how bright that light is so this is the uh aou plus light and that's on bright and that's medium and low and dim and then there's uh the, i thought there was a flashy thing on here wait i could have swore there's a flashy thing on here apparently not all right well no, no issues i don't need a flashy thing so but that's a bright light I'll, I'll be happy with that one at night i put the same light on this on this bike over here on the schwinn and then for the back light it comes with this little round thing here and it has like eight, I think six modes. It has six modes, so it has that. It has that. On. Dim. And flashy mode. And other flashy mode. And flashy mode again. All right, and off. So, yeah, that light goes there. I got the cheap Z-Fall over on this one, but that light is actually really bright. I'm happy with it. That's why I'm not changing it out. I'm going to leave that on there. And it's a good, in a good place right under the seat post there where um, it kind of points up a little bit where cars can see it pretty well at night. So I'll leave that one on there, and I'll keep the extra one that's like this, which is uh, right here. I'll keep this one for a spare in case this one goes bad. But... All right, other than that, just update on the Marlin. Um, I'm going to do a review on the Marlin. And I'll tell you right now, I really I really don't have anything bad to say about it because it's been a great bike so far. And uh, I'm just hoping it holds up to the weight. I got about, I'd say total, once I get all the food and everything on there, I'll probably have an extra 60 to 80 pounds on it. And I got to make sure I pump up the tires and all that. But... Um, I took it for a spin, loaded up like it is right now, and I don't I don't know how much everything weighs. It weighs more than I expected right now. So, uh, but it still rode good, and even out in the wind right here where I took it out, uh, just around the block, there was an uphill. Um, 
you know, in the in my area, there's it goes downhill, and then it goes straight around the corner, and you come back up like in a rectangle, and it's uphill coming back up, and not a real steep incline, probably maybe a four percent, but it's still enough to make you feel it when the bike's heavy. And uh, I was able to get down to a low enough gear where it it, it felt like nothing coming up. So um, that's going to be a different story when I've been riding all day, and there's a lot of weight on it, and uh, you know, pushing up a hill that's steeper than that. Uh, maybe doing getting off and doing a little pushing here and there, but uh, that's okay. Like I said, I, I'm not going to be in no hurry to get anywhere. I just want to be able to get out and ride, and uh, like I said, I'll end up where I end up every night. So uh, that's the update for now, and like I said, next thing probably up is going to be the Trek review, um, and then probably get into some product reviews again. And don't forget to check out my video uh, yesterday on the Schwinn if you didn't see that, and then also bought a new seat for it. Um, I'll give you a little preview of that. So it's this Lata bike seat from Cell Royale. And it says it's made in Italy. Uh, but it's it's a thick gel, but it's not a soft gel. It's it's like one of those gels that you can sit on for a long, long period of time, I think, um, without you know being too sore. And it's wide enough. I don't like those really, really thin, the ones that come on mountain bikes, you know, because they make them thin so you can kind of lean back and get over the seat when you're going downhill. I'm not going to be doing anything that extreme, so I want something a little bit wider. And this is about the same width as this width top over here. A little bit thinner, but um, I really love this seat here because this is gel and memory foam. And it's been a great seat. And this one feels pretty close to that. There's no memory foam in there, but it's a, it's a nice thick gel. It says superior comfort, uh, reduces pressure up to 40% compared with saddles uh, with ordinary gel and resistant to aging. So that's going on here next. And uh, I'm going give to give it a shot on the bike, or I'm gonna give it a, uh, a trip around the block and see how it feels, and then go for a long ride on that. And I'll do a review on that. It was only 20 bucks at Walmart. $19.99. So, uh, looks like a pretty good deal. But looks and feel are two completely different things. So, I'll uh, do a review on that. Anywho. Alright. Like I said, that's the update for today. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.